All right, this is Bill from Lilac Writer with the next how-to video. This topic about Pro Tools is something that comes up frequently, how to do an internal bounce in Pro Tools. There's quite a few videos on this, and um, I'm just going to go over the approach that I use for this, which I think makes it easy if you want to bounce a virtual instrument or maybe a, uh, a track that has a lot of effects on it. You can actually bounce any combination of tracks using this setup. So I'm going to just show how I use it, and then I'll explain exactly how the setup works. So I've got this uh, recording here where I've got just this... Um, All right, so this guitar part has um, 11 amp simulator on it, as well as a uh, echo kind of effect from a Waves plugin. And, you know, those type of things can take up some CPU. So a lot of times you want to internally uh, bounce that into an audio file so it's easier to work with, and you can um, make these tracks, this type of track, inactive. And so I like to cre keep a bounce track ready to go at any time that I want to do a bounce. And so say I want to bounce this guitar part. All, I, all I'm going to do is solo this. I'll go to my bounce track and uh, hit record. I also need to solo the uh, master track. And then basically I got to just put the uh, cursor somewhere ahead of where I need to uh, start recording and then go into record. <laughs> And I'm doing a real-time bounce to this uh, bounce track. All right, so now that I have that bounced, I'm going to create a new track to copy that to, because this is just my working track for creating the bounce. So I'll create a new stereo audio track, and there it is. And... I'll call this um, GTR new, and then I'll just grab this and copy it to that new track. And then I'll put this up near the old one. And now I can go and hide and make an active on that track. And I've got But now I've got basically the same thing without the plugins uh, using any of my uh, CPU. But the way that you use this setup is what you hear is what you get. So if I'm playing this back and I start uh, bouncing, I need to, um, I need to either, I need to either solo the things I want to hear or I need to mute the things that I don't want to hear. So in this case, I've only got this guitar track and these drums. I'm going to mute the drum track and we're going to go right back to the uh, bounce track, record enable. And now basically we're mixing down the drum sub. And it's a real time mix down, so you do have to let it play all the way through. So I'll just go ahead and stop that. And now I've got a drum uh, mix to work with. And again, I'd create a new track, a new stereo track, and then label it, drum mix, drag it over. And there you have it. All right, so now I'm back to uh, where I did before I did any of that bouncing. Now we can take a look at the setup. So here's my guitar track with 11 on it, and I've replaced the master fader with an aux input and I called it master and you'll see why I did that later in the video but uh, just take my word for it that will help help you later on and now I've set up in the busing I went to IO setup and under bus I've labeled the very first stereo pair which is one and two as master and I've labeled the second one as two mix don't worry about two mix right now. We'll get to that later. And I also renamed my first analog output, which is my outputs one on two, uh, one and two on my sound card, to control room with also some little dashes before and after it, so I can easily see 
that I'm that that's going to a hardware output that's actually connected to my speakers. And you'll see on my master that the output is set to that control room. And if you want to put a master fader on that for an overall level, uh, you can do that as well. But for simplicity right now, I'm leaving that out. So the trick is you need to take this master bus and assign any of your individual tracks or your sub mixes to the master bus and then have the master bus as the input to your, uh, your master um, auxiliary input. So that's the trick. And it's important that you use an auxiliary input when you do track new to create this master. So by assigning your buses and your individual tracks to the master output rather than to one of your hardware outputs, you have the opportunity to put two things in parallel. One, we're going to the master input, but we're also going to this bounce track. And the bounce track is an ordinary stereo audio track. And a little trick that I've done here is I've set the output of that to null, which is a unused, otherwise unused bus. Go back into setup, take a look at that under bus. I set the very last one on the list, list to null. And um, I just won't use that for anything else, but that way no sound is going to come out um, if I route something through that. I'm using this to capture the bounce, and then after that I'll drag that clip out. But if you capture it into something and that output is set to um, a hardware output, you're going to start hearing that in the background, and it's going to be really confusing when you play back. So I just set that to null, and I don't listen to anything through that track. All right, so we're going to do this. We're going to uh, do another example of recording the drum sub. And in this case, I'm just going to mute the guitar part. So we're hearing that. I'll rewind, hit record. And then if I uh, go back to the other view, you can see I'm recording. I'm now bouncing the drum part down in real time. As soon as you bounce something, you're going to want to do this, create a new track and copy this clip over to that track. So anyway, it's a great way to keep your song organized uh, lightweight. All right, now, so the next obvious question is, how do I actually do an internal mix? Here's how you do it. <clears throat> and if you're on an HD system, you can um, easily do it this way as well. So rather than use this bounce track, we're going to create a slightly different setup for an internal bounce. But I will use this as a, re as a reference. So I'm going to duplicate this track. And... Uh, we'll just duplicate it. And the second track, I'm going to call two mix. So this is going to be my internal two mix track. So now the setup here, we're going to come from the bus called two mix. So now this one's ready to go anytime we want to do a uh, mix down. So say we've got a plugin effects on here for, say we've got a limiter on this channel. Gotta be muted. All right, so this is the guitar part. This is the new drum mix that we just bounced. And so say we want to do a mix down of this through this limiter. All we've got to do with this setup, it provided you leave this two mix channel in your project. This is just a channel, an ordinary channel. Um, it's set to null, its input is to two mix, you can leave it that way. What you do have to change though, is the control room output of the main channel needs to change to bus two mix. And then at this point you might change the two mix bus if you want to hear it <clears throat> while it's mixing down, then change the two mix bus output to control room if you'd like to do that. And then uh, we'll rewind that. Get ready to record. And now over on the main uh, page, you'll see that we're mixing down to the two mix.